Boring Breakdowns, Joe Cherney T Clinch Seminar Part 2. If you guys have not watched Part 1, I recommend that you hit that up right here before jumping into this one. It's going to go over some underlying principles that will lead us into what we're going to talk about today. First thing we're going to discuss, guys, is the padlock game over position. Here, Joe gets into the T Clinch, Smother Control here, and Inside Tie. Now, he is using this inside tie. The padlock position is very important because it gives the opponent no opportunity for escape. He is going to pass the opponent's right arm behind his back. When he passes, he's going to keep the inside bicep tie until that far underhook arm, which is behind the opponent's back and comes through the hole right here, is completely over top of his left arm. Now this forms a padlock. If the opponent does wind up escaping Joe's left arm, he falls right into Joe's underhook arm here. So again, it leaves the opponent no opportunity to escape this right arm here, and Joe is able to feed the right arm behind his back. Now, once he feeds it behind the back, we're going to get to our next principle, which is the head control arm. Now, the head control arm here has an important function. Let's see what it does. When Joe throws the knee, it's not just the power of his knee. He's using the head control arm to pull the opponent into the strike right here. Very, very useful to not just use your lower body, but crunch them into it. The next opportunity we see are the knee openings, which we already discussed that. Notice, guys, how open the opponent's gut is. The arms of the opponent are, one, being stacked on Joe's shoulder, so he can't pull that back, and two, being locked behind his back here. That leaves nothing to protect the gut, and leaves him ripe for the knees. Now, the next and last point of number six is the escape counter. The escape counter is really important because no position, no matter how good it is against a struggling opponent, an unwilling opponent, can last forever. You always have to be dynamic. Let's see how Joe uses a counter when the opponent escapes. He is going to use his left arm to immediately get this inside control. Now, the inside control is really important because now the opponent cannot punch Joe here because he has to go around this vertical bar of his forearm. Great work, again, being transition-friendly with your positions. If Joe were to simply give up completely and let the opponent get an inside control as opposed to countering that right arm of the opponent, he has to start from way, way further back and build back into a dominant position. Now, last little bit, bonus detail. This is UFC fighter Johnny Walker. Uh, I actually spoke to Joe. It turns out he was a bit afraid of knee strikes, perhaps going outside of the ropes, and uh, he is protecting his possessions. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in one more time. T-clinch, padlocks the arm, head control, knee op uh, opportunities right here, and inside tie. Now, if you guys watched the first video, we discussed how the opponent's elbow position is a key element when entering into the T-clinch. Now we're going to discuss how their elbow plays an important role in the transition between the head and arm to the T-clinch. Let's jump in. Here, Joe is initiating boxing and they enter into the clinch range. Now, from here, Joe uses his hand to pass the opponent's extended arm past his head here. Now, as he does this, the near side hand to us, Joe's left arm, is going to grab around the neck. Now, we can see that all Joe needs is to simply clasp his hands together, and he has a successful head and arm clinch. But the opponent is going to bring 
his elbow on the other side of Joe's head. Now, from here, he has invited Joe into the T-clinch. Let's look. Joe has the underhook here, the inside bicep tie here, and he's able to off-balance the opponent and put him in the game-over position. So, again, keep track of the opponent's elbow, whether it's on this side of the head where you can get the head and arm clinch, or on this side of the head where you can get the T-clinch. The next transition is a T-clinch back to a head and arm clinch. Now, this is something that's much more applicable in MMA. I'm not 100% familiar with the rules of this promotion, but they seem to let the clinch go quite a bit, uh, a bit more than many standard Muay Thai matches would go. So Joe started with the head and arm clinch. The opponent got the arm free that Joe was underhooking and turned his back. This promotion let the clinch continue, and notice Joe still has the same controls. He has that game over position uh, locking the opponent's right arm, and he has the head control with his left. From here, he stays on the opponent's back and throws knees. Now, from here, we're going to see a transition from the back into the head and arm. How does Joe play this? He's going to let go of the game over position arm, this locked up right arm of the opponent, and sneak this up the opponent's chest to the far side of his head. From here, the opponent understands that this arm is free and is going to turn back into Joe. As he does this, he falls into the trap that Joe has set, and Joe feeds the right arm all the way up, and grips his hands together around the opponent's head and arm, where he finishes the transition. Now that we've discussed some transitions to and from the T-clinch, from different clinch positions, let's talk about Joe's elbow position, which invites a pummel, thereby uh, allowing Joe to gift wrap or padlock. From here, Joe has the T-clinch. The opponent is trying to pummel his glove inside here to get rid of that inside bicep tie of Joe. Joe keeps his elbow tight, not allowing the opponent to pummel. Now, because the opponent attempted this pummel and tried to press into this direction here, he actually brought his arm closer to Joe, which makes it that much easier for Joe to padlock and get to the game over position. So one more time, Joe is able to padlock because the opponent pummeled, and then he head controls, and notice the open gut for that game over position. Lastly, let's discuss another way Joe beats a neutral clinch position via cross-facing the opponent into the modified T-clinch. So if you guys want to know more about the modified T-Clinch, again, I encourage you to watch the first T-Clinch seminar that we posted on the YouTube channel. From here, Joe is going to initiate with boxing. The opponent grips up, and from here, notice you can just see the fingers of Joe's right gloves cross-facing the opponent. This is going to create space and push the opponent's face in this direction here, making it very difficult for the opponent to maintain these grips on Joe. Once he is able to establish this cross face, he's able to overhook, which is leading to the modified T clinch. Now, as he gets the overhook, he gets that inside bicep tie, and starts digging his head into the opponent's temple there for the head control. Now this is the full modified T-clinch, which is going to bring us to our last point. The overhook figure four. The overhook figure four is this hand right here grabbing his bicep. This just leads to a more secure, stronger position where Joe can throw these short shots 
and throw the knees to the gut. Let's watch one more time. Initiating the clinch, cross-facing to create that space, overhook, figure four, and head control. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This concludes part two of Joe Cherney's T-Clinch Seminar. If you do have any questions, please feel free to comment them below. And also, I will be adding uh, links to Joe Cherney's social media as well as his Academy's website. Highly recommend that if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area that you train with him at California Martial Athletics. Again, all the links will be in the description below. And thank you guys so much again for watching Boring Breakdowns. Peace.